Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review and comparison of some various types of variable torque self-tapping sheet metal screwdrivers. These are adjustable torque screwdrivers. They are commonly used with sheet metal construction, sheet metal roofing, sheet metal framing. And what they're designed to do is, is turn a faster and apply a specific amount of torque, kind of like having a torque wrench built into a, a electric tool. These are also types of tools although much higher quality that are found in factories during assembly because it allows you to run in screws, assemble stuff uh, very quickly and make sure that they have an appropriate amount of torque. And that they are similar to and have similar functions in engineering designs as a uh, drywall screwdriver except for a drywall screw gun is designed to make sure screws go flush to a surface not apply any amount of torque. They will apply as much torque as the screw gun is capable of until uh, the screw goes to the surface and countersinks as much as you want it to, just a little bit, and then it will stop turning the screw. That's the purpose of a drywall screwdriver, where one of these will apply a certain amount of torque. So even if the screw is kind of going below a surface, say screwing together a couple pieces of plywood, it will continue to turn until the screw has a certain amount of tightness. So they're great for like floor underlayment because it makes sure it sucks down all the pieces. These are also generally more powerful. A drywall screwdriver will be very fast, 4000 RPM, and so it has a low gear ratio and not a lot of torque. They're for driving easy to drive uh, drywall screws. Where the fastest among these is 2500 RPM, and we even have some slower high torque ones like 750 and 900 RPM. And even though obviously I don't have comparisons of all the latest generation tools, that'd be pretty expensive. These types of screwdrivers tend to be uh, quite a bit more expensive than their drywall screwdriver counterparts. Drywall screwdrivers can commonly be found for you know professional brand, you know, Milwaukee's or Porter Cables, DeWalt's. For $100 or even quite a bit less. All of these, uh, in I think you know Milwaukee and Makita and even Bosch make modern ones. They tend to be a lot more expensive. $150 to $200. Like this modern DeWalt. And we have a DW268. That's a 2500 RPM, 6.5 amp. They make a 2000 RPM and even a, a low 1000 RPM high torque model. And this is a current unit, but they've had this nose design for quite a while. And so kind of the purpose of this video is for people who just like to see comparisons of various different tools that are all designed to do the same thing, uh, just m quite a bit of different approaches. And yes, this Porter Cable down here is a screwdriver drill. It's a really interesting take. Anyway, kind of a little journey just for tool aficionados. I actually have a few subscribers who are really into these kind of things. A long time ago, I did review this DeWalt. And uh, it was just like a bench review, not too great. So this time I'm going to run a series of screws. So I'm going to, I have all these, I believe, adjusted pretty well. And uh, for each one, and I'll do a quick like cuts and edits where I just run these four lag screws with each one of the tools. But I'll make it quick where I run them and then I'll do cuts. So you don't have to see me pull them back out and then run, uh, pick up the next tool, etc. And they cut the stores short, these DeWalt's, which are just, you know, Black & Decker's Industrial and Heavy Duty Division was renamed DeWalt, and then that was like 20, 25 years ago. Uh, but that's how they started out. So both of the Black & Decker Industrial and this are DeWalt's, but this is a modern one, and they're pretty much the standard. When they came out with this whole spindle design here, this was just what really worked very well. And many businesses and professionals just swear by these. They have a nice small spindle. It's all metal. Uh, it's very easy to adjust. You just have this collar that just, if my camera will focus, that you just pop up and twist. And it just has little plagues that lock in. It even has uh, little numbers, so you can even remember that. Although you don't ever really use that. And just a nice quick-release collar. And they've had that for more than two decades. These things are really long-lasting. This is a much older version. This is, oh, and I didn't even give that a dry run. This is a modern one. This thing's really pretty high performance. It can really drill some, run some fasteners just through some pretty thick metal. This is a much older version, but it's just the very same collar. It really has just been the very same design for a very long time. 
really tried and true. This is a high torque version. This is a uh, 2050, and this thing runs at 5 amps at 900 RPM. So this is for much larger fasteners. And is actually triple gear reduction. We have a Skill 285, which is my least favorite version. The clutch is much softer than many of the other tools here. And it's nice for lighter fasteners, but it's just one of the worst things to adjust. You actually have to stick a slot head screwdriver in through this slot to actually lock up the adjustment ring. And then you have to get some apparatus to actually, with a quarter inch hex, because you actually have to hold the screwdriver in the little slot. You have to line it up. And then you need some kind of tool to twist the hex because you can't grab onto the bit like, you know, this half-inch drive adapter and a big old socket that you have to put into the anvil. And then you twist it back and forth. And then you have to pull this out, put in the bit, and then test the tool to see if it's the right amount of torque. It was really just an absolute nightmare. I can see why this one was donated, but I can't believe that they would have sold very many of these tools. Even though it is a pretty smooth operating clutch, it is just a bear to adjust. Extremely time consuming. All of these tools are reversible. And all except for like the 70s skill here are variable speed. And that Sue up there, which is a really light clutch. That's a, some, that is a real light assembly and it's also a gooseneck. It has a very nice, this is a Sue 246 out of Sioux City, Iowa. And uh, it just has a gooseneck. It's a really nice setup. It's so compact. They had reversible and forward-only versions. Forward-only versions didn't have this big block, but it was so compact in there that when you had the reversing option, they just had to make a whole uh, additional casting and bolt it to the back of their original tool so they could put in a traditional heavy-duty reversing switch. It's really underpowered. 1.4 amp motor. And this one isn't so bad to adjust, but it's still kind of bad because you actually have to unscrew this collar and then use a wrench inside while holding the anvil to adjust the torque. And it's kind of funny because you have to open up the tool every time you want to adjust it. But once you get it adjusted, it's pretty good. We have like a probably an 80s or a 90s Milwaukee. What is that? That is a 6783, 4.5 amp, 2500 RPM. This is a genuine Milwaukee screw shooter, so don't see these very often. It's just a built on a pretty heavy chassis, not just their standard like 3 8 drill hat chassis, because it has a very thick uh, diaphragm section in there. Milwaukee's always have really nice motors. This one's really funky. Uh, the spin, the whole nose piece is just gigantic. This locking collar is plastic. Really surprised. The rest of it's all aluminum, and this collar up here is steel. But of course, the plastic, uh, the little notches get worn out. They actually don't come with slopes, but once they do, then this uh, collar doesn't quite stay in place. It also uses a clutch mechanism that's more like a cordless drill rather than the rest of these, which is like a heavy duty ver kind of a modified version of what a drywall screwdriver has. Um, but much heavier duty, kind of a cross between a drywall screwdriver clutch and a hammer drill mechanism. Just because these are designed to operate where a drywall screwdriver will run the screw and then the clutch disengages, where these always make kind of a, you know, a grinding sound you'll hear. And I personally use this Milwaukee and I have issues with the little peg that holds in the bit, wants to fall out and you have to hunt it down. We have the skill, which is a single speed. This is actually sold as a self-drilling fastener driver, 4 amp, 2500 RPM. Pretty nice one. This was when Skill was really an uh, American Chicago, American-made tools. It just is weird because back in the when they were making this, they also had a drywall screwdriver which had a similar mechanism, but this just has a modified clutch, and I don't really like the way it operates because it really bounces back and forth pretty far. The last one is this Porter cable, which is uh, 4 amps. It's 1,000 RPM, so it's a bit higher torque. Kind of drags the chuck. And how this works is that this sleeve is what adjusts the clutch, but it only rotates about 180 degrees. I'm not going to touch it right here because I'm about to run some fasteners. 
So it's kind of weird to use because it has a very fine set uh, adjustment range, but it has a pretty good amount of stiction, so it doesn't really self-adjust. And it's just kind of a weird idea where you can adjust it to, to operate in a clutch zone so it will uh, you know, stop turning at a specific amount of force, but it has a drill chuck on it, so you can use it with drill bits. And if you have situations where drill bits are breaking, then you can use something like this where it will, where it will, it will slip before the drill bit breaks. Or you can just turn it all the way to the drill mode and it just locks the clutch together so it can't move. And then it's just a normal 1000 RPM, 3 8 inch drill. Okay, we're going to start off with the Sioux. Since it has such a light clutch, let me move this a little more forward. I'm just using these like 2 inch screws, which are actually square drive because it's easier, to, it's harder to use Phillips. One of the notes about these types of drivers is that the amount of force that you put down on them does change the amount of torque that they're applying. So they take technique. It's both a good and a bad thing because it's kind of difficult to start these screws because they really want to wobble. And you can run them like a drywall screwdriver where they're just always running. And all of them except for the seal have uh, trigger locks on them. And what's kind of nice is that even if you don't start with full pressure, they work out just fine. Here's a quick zoom of the Sioux. You can see even with the short head screws, this is Douglas fir that it really did, and this is the best angle, I'm sorry about the angle, but you can see how consistent. Those four screws, even though I didn't start them very elegantly, are all really close and height off the surface of the wood, and that's really one of the best things about these drivers. And so if I was had some kind of sheeting that had like some folds or warps, it would actually suck those warps down and make sure it pulled them down nice and tight, but without pulling the, risking pulling the screw head actually through the material. One of the nice things about the pressure is if you for some reason need to pull out the screw it's in the wrong spot you just apply a little bit of extra pressure in reverse and you have no problem just immediately backing out the screw without having to fiddle with the clutch setting here we are with the porter cable 622HD very good bit retention because it uses a drill chuck and now we've switched over to 516 hex head uh, lag screws just because uh, they're a lot more, they have a lot more stability. So, a little bit more pressure there. There we go. And what's nice is you can just go right on, if you don't get it down far enough, you can just apply a little bit more pressure and get the fastener flush. And then if you find that you don't like how hard you're having to push on the tool, you just adjust the clutch to be a little bit more aggressive. I'll just do it a touch here, put a little too much weight on that. There we go, that's a little bit better. This is a little better performance. I just wish it had some kind of lock. You just want to, a lot of times, study a drill by grabbing it like this, and then you just, it's so easy to adjust that clutch collar, so that's kind of the Achilles heel with this unit. But it's pretty consistent. I really do like it as a kind of an interesting tool. It is a drill with a variable torque clutch, but kind of different from a cordless one because this is like a heavy duty corded version designed to really run a lot of fasteners. Here we are with the Skill 288. Uh, this one is pretty nice. I really do like it. It is a Type 4, if you can see that right there. Whenever you see a power tool, they'll have a type, except for Milwaukee's, it's a little more difficult with them. And I guess Makita's, to tell you the truth, but many power tool companies will put, revision. that's basically like a software revision number. So like this one being a type four means that it's, they've had four different changes since the initial release of the tool, have updated or fixed a problem or something like that. And that's kind of let, letting you know, and then when you get it repaired that you need type four parts. Even with that, uh, it's, <laughs> The bit retention is already worn out on this tool, and I really don't like how 
Uh, it kind of performs, to tell you the truth, but it's part of the whole collection of these. It really has a very aggressive clutch in it. It's kind of annoying. I'll just drive a couple of fasteners here. The biggest problem is trying to get the thing started when the thing just <laughs> jump starts. It's actually pretty powerful with the 4 amp motor. Um, the thing is ridiculous. You can't, <laughs> you almost have to like. I mean, it's fast and it's powerful for a little driver, but it's a bear to use. On the Skill 285, they uh, did fix that re bit retention issue, but way too far in the other direction. You basically have to stand on it just to insert the bit, and you absolutely have to use pliers. You cannot physically remove the bits without pliers in this tool. It's, <laughs> it's like a stark difference from one tool just wearing out and falling out to another one that you need other tools to insert and remove the bits. This was when Skill was getting just a little bit more desperate. They were getting plasticky and then on the tool, heavy duty ball, needle bearings, adjustable clutch, reversible trigger speed control. I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but all these are going to be ball, needle bearing, professional grade tools that I'm reviewing here. None of these are cheap, cheesy tools. And I didn't get the clutch adjusted quite tight enough because it is just such a bear to adjust it, test, adjust it again. It's really pretty annoying. And it's also kind of odd that it has such a light clutch for being geared all the way down to, and if we can see it right there, where is it? There we go, 750 RPM. Really low speed, so you think it has quite a bit of torque, and then they put a light clutch on that's nearly impossible to adjust. Here's this beautiful Milwaukee 6783, and uh, it is beautifully built, but it's the heaviest tool in this whole, uh, this whole collection here. It's the longest tool in the whole collection. Really well built. It's such a shame that they use a plastic collar here. It just totally doesn't make sense, especially for a tool company that's going to make a gearbox that has four screws holding it on instead of three. The other problem is it really is annoying. The clutch is profoundly annoying and it's really not a tool you, you end up using just because of the noise of the clutch. Can you imagine that having to drive hundreds of screws and hearing that sound over and over again? I mean that would get real old real fast. But I'll tell you what, it has some of the most consistent uh, clutch action out of all these drivers. That really is true. It's really quite amazing. Let me zoom in. I don't know how well you can see that, but with the Milwaukee, it's just really... You can adjust it so that the screw, that these lag screws would sit right on top of the wood. Or in this case, it's sunk into the wood, but just by the thickness of the little integrated washer... And each one is almost exactly the same. It's really, it functions very well. Too bad it's incredibly noisy, heavy, and oversized. Here we have the Black & Decker Industrial 2050. Uh, I believe it would be a D-Wall TW266 or something like that for the current unit. They do have a different kind of base adjustment setting. These They know this is the high torque one. 5 amp motor, triple reduction. Pretty powerful, 900 RPM. So these are the institution. These, the Black & Deckers, the DeWalt's, just the way that they fine-tune, the way the clutch operates, and how easy it is to adjust. I think that's a little bit light, so I can just twist it until it snaps in the next position. Just that easy. And my next fastener is a little deeper, and if I have one that's a little shy, I can go over the top of the old one, and it's not really that noisy, and it doesn't vibrate a ton in your hand. And these things seem to be able to drive tens of thousands of fasteners, I mean. Not super loud, just really, if you're going to buy one of these uh, sheet metal framing 
on a screwdriver, I would get one of the DeWalt's. They have brushless, cordless versions. I will mention, so here's the DeWalt DW268. They make a little bit higher torque version, a 2000 RPM DW267, as well as a really high torque 1000 RPM one. This is like the current industry standard. I think they're still like 150 bucks. I did a review a long time ago and promised I'd finally actually do a proper comparison and demonstration. It just took me a long time. But these things are just amazing when you're driving all sorts of fasteners that you have to do repetitively. You can just get a nice torque going and just run them all in. All right, here we go. Come on now. With the 6.5 amp motor, it's really just fine. I mean, these can run, this could run some pretty darn large fasteners. Whoops, sorry. And you know if you don't press light enough, it'll do that. And all you have to do is put a little bit more pressure on. And that's kind of the, the technique of using these. It's not really a disadvantage because once you get used to the way they operate, it actually turns out to be a very big advantage in getting near perfect consistent work. Because you just get used to pressing them in there and then you just kind of err on the side of going a little bit too light rather than too heavy. And it's real easy just to go right back to the previous faster and just give it a little bit more torque. So anyway, that was the end of a probably overly long review and comparison of primarily older tools that you'd have to find on eBay. But they do show up used. I found this collection and it didn't really take very long and it wasn't very expensive. People, you know, I mean, and I understand why people aren't in the old tools, but they are cool and you can get them for... Cheap. I'd even get this for the actual 40 bucks. This thing was like 15 bucks. And it isn't the best, but I do like how it operates. And it's just kind of neat to build up a collection like this and then show people who are also interested in the same type of things. Just the interesting takes on doing the very same thing. And it does kind of show why that the modern uh, DeWalt uh, really are the industry standard for just how they operate and their general usability and reliability. There's been a lot of various attempts at that tool, and even great ones like these two are, you know, relegated to the dust bins of history. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.